Hello, everybody. Whether you like it or not, the energy world is changing. The grid has got problems coming around the corner because of the administration's rolling out of bad energy policies. We need energy storage like you would not believe. I'll tell you what, I've got a guest today that I'm excited to visit with. He is with, he's the president of American Battery Factory. And I mean, John Kim is absolutely a major general retired and I am so excited to visit with you. How are you today? Hey, Stu, great to be on. Thanks for having me on. We're excited. American Battery Factory is a growing place, and we're excited just to explain what we do. And the grid, as you mentioned, is a serious challenge, and we're part of the solution. You know, it's kind of funny. We talk about the grid. A, before we get anywhere, thank you for your service. Holy smokes, a major general. Thank you. When did you go into into your service? I went to West Point, and I, I started in 1981. I graduated in 1985, and then I spent 35 years in the Army, Good which means you. I must have liked it, right? Because you don't do something that long unless you like it, right? So I did. I loved doing it. And right. I wanted to serve, and I uh, wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, my my dad retired, and he was a he he was a fighter pilot, bomber pilot, and retired out there. So I love love the military and love all of our great veterans. So thank you for your service. But now that you're in the business world, the grid, the energy policies, we have got to have storage because if you're putting this much renewable energy out there, it's the grid is becoming unstable stable like let's take texas just as as an example ERCOT is god bless them they're doing the best they can they've got more wind and solar than just about everybody else and they're trying to keep it up but they say they have to grow the grid and double it in less than five years this is a huge undertaking no, absolutely. And and towards your comment, it's a combination, not just of the electrification goals, which is a little bit transcends administrations, but it's obviously more with the current administration, but the electrification right. that everybody's interested in, right? And yep. more redundant power and day and nighttime cycling to get better pricing, but then throw in just the sheer volume, I'll call it the NVIDIA effect, but the data center part, right? Yeah, the AI, right. there is no net zero. Right. And I read somewhere that I think that they were two and a half percent of our electricity use a couple of years ago. And in 2030, it'll be more than 12.5. So just all that alone is a such a demand that our environmental permitting, our grid production, our power lines cannot keep up. Right. No. And so the real the only solution is to have safe, reliable storage so we can have a smarter grid while we're waiting to expand it all, because at least there, there is enough power most of the time. The question is. When you have a problem moment or in a disaster, how exactly. can you take advantage of storage? You know, we're sitting here, we're I'm, we're kind of teeing this up for a business case for American Battery Factory. What are you guys doing to solve this? Because this is a big problem coming around the corner. Well, you know, we all have seen, if you walk into a Costco or Walmart or other places, you see battery storage systems. For homes, there's a number of small businesses and larger kind of grid storage applications. But the problem is the battery storage companies, those who build those systems, right? most of the parts don't come from the U.S. So Exactly. The, 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 and battery cells are probably, the cell itself is 55 to 60% of that right. battery storage system. And I would argue the, the, you, you need electronics. But the important part is you got nothing without the battery storage cells. And so almost none are made in the U.S., more than about 85% or more is made in China. So right. our effort is to bring battery storage cells, lithium iron phosphate, the type, bringing those to the United States right. because we need more grid storage and we need home storage. And the way to do that is with U.S. made battery cells. Hey, you know, I'll tell you, by looking at your 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 website, you take a look at the, the lithium ion so it would be safer than just lithium batteries, correct? Well, so just to differentiate, so they are lithium ion. That's the thing that kind of, you know, the flow right. of, of electricity requires those lithium ions. But ours is based on lithium, iron, and phosphates. What's so called E from the old chemistry, okay. think of the chemistry tables, E is iron. So right. it's LFP. That's very different than NMC, where you have the nickel and the manganese and, and some of the other materials 
Right. And so ours are different than your typical car EV. And Good. the difference is, <laughs> there's a couple of big differences, but two main ones are, Ours are much more longer lasting. You get more than twice the life. So we're talking nice. 15 to 20 years instead of the seven to eight years. And we all think about if you do a home improvement and you put a storage system in by your house, in your garage, right. who wants one that's going to have to be replaced in six, seven or eight years like a car does? Oh, you want yeah. one 15 or 20. Well, that's getting up there to the time to renovate the house or do something after a while. So right. the, the timeline is valuable, but then more importantly is the safety reliability. Okay. Lithium iron phosphate doesn't catch fire the same way. doesn't mean there's right. no risk of anything. There is in any system. Sure. But it doesn't produce oxygen when it burns. It's a totally different model, a totally different chemistry. Uh, and so far more reliable and safety. If you're going to attach something to your house, that's what you want. Something that doesn't catch fire easily. Uh, yes. Because of, unfortunately, because of the folks that I've interviewed, I, I realized we got some grid problems coming up. And so I've personally put a, a micro grid for my uh, several buildings that I've got. And I've got wind, solar, I've got twin propane generators, and I've got battery storage. So all I need to do is fire up my, my propane generators to charge my batteries and I'm doing okay. Not a bad system, but it seems like we have a, a disparity system going on on our grid where we're going to need these kind of affordable backups for homes. Are you looking also at selling these to manufacturers like the manufacturers that sell the products or cars? Who's your target market? Well, our, our main, we're main focused, we're mainly focused on the battery storage system side. Okay. Not directly to cars, because for cars, most up to this point are the NMC because they want the peak power and they use right. a, a cylinder that doesn't give you quite the, that doesn't give you the length and lifetime. We're doing prismatic right. cells, which is a special folding. It lasts much longer. It's very reliable. So our main product is a 310 amp hour, by kind of the size right. of a funny shaped shoebox. Yep. And you can stack those together into those battery storage systems for home or grids that you were talking about. Nice. And so we're, we're, we're we have, you know, so our, really, our factory is just now getting underway in terms of building it this winter. So nice. we will have cells for about 18 months. Right. But the reality is, if we had them today, we could sell all of them because everybody, oh. the demand is so high to have you uh, as long as we produce at a good price. Right. It'd be great. You know, price competitive. A, if it's American made and if it is for like RVs or off grid living, I mean, this would be huge. That's a huge market. Well, Stu, I would say the, the, the real, I think the real long-term market is if you had 25 to 30% of the homes in the United States and small business yes. had four to eight hours of storage, right? yes. that would solve, that, that that's obviously takes money and over time, but that would make such a big dent in our grid peak problem. You can think about people in Texas, California in particular, where at certain times of the year, the price during heat of the day is, is really high. Right. So you could potentially have yours fully stored at buying your power at that peak, right, at night. And then right. during the day, you can run yeah. off of your storage for a couple hours. And then when it gets, if it gets tight, you can put it back on. But but for the grid system, you now have, they could theoretically turn off my house for two hours because right. they really have a problem with peak loading, like you were talking about at the beginning. Yep. And I wouldn't even notice, right? We just had a tornado two weeks ago here. And all my neighbors were without power and I'm skipping around going, all right, the system's working. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it, it's a whole different mindset. Absolutely. Be prepared ahead of time. Absolutely. And right. bringing safe, reliable battery cells is a, is a, cure, a, a serious part of that solution, right? We need lots of things. Yeah. We need more grid. We need more ability to move it. We need more power lines. We need more solar, wind, you know, natural gas. We need all that, right? We need it all. And, and, you know, I, I am not a renewable fan from the standpoint that word renewable means it is renewable and sustainable is also fiscally responsible. I'm all in on, hey, let's use wind and solar, but they're not recycling those products like they should. That whole thing is not done. Just like the oil and gas industry has had a hundred years to get there. They're now trying to figure out and plug the orphan wells. They're doing better on that. And so we've got to get the same recycling and environmentally good impact on the wind and solar. Like not, let's not kill whales or eagles or got to figure all that out. I mean, I'm a ecological kind of guy on that. 
and it's got to be fiscally responsible. And it sounds like your battery is in that category of fiscally responsible. Absolutely. I mean, we're doing, you know, our first factory is just south of Tucson Airport. We picked that location because the land is reliable, not super expensive. The power is reliable. We're not a big water user. We're not a big polluter. So it's a it's a great place to build our very first factory. But towards your your earlier comment, I mean, the reality is being you you have to be able to manufacture at a reasonable price and you have to be a good environmental steward and you got to be a safe place to work. Or how can you stay in business? Right. You you couldn't afford the insurance, first of all, you know, (laughs) but just in in principle. So we're trying to do all those things. And I tell you that I agree with you on the solar and wind because they're only now after 15, 20 years of some of these things. Right. trying to face those. How do you upgrade? How do you do that mid-cycle change? And so those learning lessons are, are hard. That they that, yeah. and, and, and so the interesting thing, I'll give you an example. People talk to us about how will our battery cells be recycled? Well, right. we, we're, we're thinking through that. We're working with some battery storage system companies on how could you make it so it could pull apart easier? I'll use that term intentionally. Right. right. A battery cell. Because right now what people do is you throw all the, you throw those battery cells with all the metal, all the plastic into a big giant machine. It grinds it all up. And then you use right. chemistry, heat, vibration, and energy to pull it all apart. Right. Well, how can you do that better? But the funny part is we're hoping ours won't have to be recycled for 15 or 20 years. So we're trying to think, how will somebody want to recycle this in 2040? Because if we build it right, you won't have to before that. That's that's a great thought, but I also like your thought of recycling ahead of time. I interviewed the CEO of Frere Battery, who's building a big plant in, I believe, North Carolina. They've got one coming in. They're out of Norway, and they have their technology that is recyclable as as well. So I love battery technology that is planned for obsolescence through recyclable. I give you a hug right now, but I don't think a two-star general would appreciate a a, a man hug. As long as we keep it short, it's okay. Okay, but that's that's one of my biggest hot buttons, sir. I mean, it is a huge hot button for me. I think it's fantastic. Well, it's interesting. It's also fascinating working with some of the battery storage system companies like Line Energy and others who are trying to think through that right. because, you know, they're the ones who are really putting in all the electronics, all the computer, all the compute, and all those other parts, the really high end parts. So right. they're thinking through how could they make it so you could replace some parts if you needed some minor changes. Some, right. There's always something that goes bad a little bit. How can you do that in a very efficient way? And then whatever comes out can be recycled easily. It means they got to rethink how they put them together. You know, as a business model, Jackery is a excellent company. I have a lot of those. In fact, I've got for each of my cars, I've got a Jackery, which is a small portable thing with a solar that I travel with. I also have a travel satellite kit from Elon Musk, Starlink, so I can be in contact. I can have power. I I got travel kits so I can go anywhere and, and not worry about the grid. I think that would be a great model for you as well as to build those components because that is a strong market for affordable, not only the house, but the it seems like the grid is going to get to a point where disproportionately impacted communities won't be able to afford what you and I would really want everyone to have. And those smaller $500 to $1,000 generators, if you would, that are solar powered, be a great kit for you guys to just snap on and add a couple components. And that would be a great add-on to your your product line. Absolutely. And you really really actually see that in the storage community now, right? They're they're doing those things. That's some of the stuff you have where they're compatible. You can use your phone to talk to them. But in, in the end, they all... so. They all need battery cells. So we're trying to stay kind of pure, right? We're not trying to be up and down the supply chain. We're trying to get US-based raw materials, make 310 amp hour battery cells. We have some specialty ones also and do that fast and efficiently. And then one thing I would add is we do have a adjacent building, a foundry line next door, an innovative foundry line. Because we all read in the newspapers and magazines and podcasts about the newest electrochemistry that's going to solve all energy problems, right? In a lab. But- if you talk to most of those people, getting it from the lab to be able to manufacture at scale is almost impossible. Like right. one out of 20 might be scalable. Right. So we're going to have a place where you can do both of those things together, bring the chemistry and then work on scaling so nice. that we can be ready as, you know, so people, not just for us, for other people can come use it and go, hey, can we, can this turn into something bigger? 
Isn't that great? And if your cells are of a standard size, then you can turn around and go after the jackeries of the world and see if they can get extra bonus points for using American components. Did I hear that correctly? Exactly, Stu. That's exactly right. I like that. So then that way you can say, hey, we are used in these components and everything else. Absolutely. I don't know that we'll see solar powered tanks anytime soon. No, you know, on the army side of things, one of the challenges in the forward compute is you re- you need very high peak power sometimes right. or you're off grid for a while. And so how do you have enough? How do you get that power forward? You can't store enough or you can't, I, I would say this way, you can, even with the really, really the fastest charging, right. you can't fully charge fast enough, right? It does take a few minutes to fill a tank with JP8, JP4, and all the other weird fuels, right? But you can't do that batteries fast enough right now. But they do have a lot of, but there's a lot of value to them because you want to be quiet. You want some remote sensing. You want uh, robotic things that don't make a lot of noise. So this, the the, the long-term part of how you use battery storage and forward compute Right. That's the future of, of the battlefield. And so you kind of need all oh, of it. I'll, t- I'll tell you what, getting off topic for just half sec, the battlefield has changed. Drones scare me to death. Speaking of batteries, have you seen some of the Ukraine fights going on with the Russian drones coming in? That is a whole new warfare. No, I, have, oh, I mean, it's a, it's no. a hard challenge. The, one of the things that is unique about that place is they're, they're both very, I would call it, somewhat stagnant armies. They're not moving and doing a lot. They, they try to move, but they're pretty, there's a lot of part that's very World War One ish So you're bringing drones into areas, you know where things are, right. you've seen them. But the biggest challenge nowadays in the battlefield is there's, if it's against a good enemy, you can no longer hide. Right. right. You can't really hide. Therefore, you have to be ready to move quickly. You got to be able to adjust. You got to be able to reach deeper, right? So you can impact, your know, drones can only be manipulated from so far. And you have to be able to, if you want to talk to them where they're right. free or they're free drones, but how do you impact where the drones are taking off from or where the electronics are talking yeah. to them? So it's a very complicated electromagnetic world out there. And it's getting crazier. I, You know, AI is absolutely who. And I think that I, I love the idea of net zero. Hey, let's, let's end pollution. And I think net zero should be renamed something else because CO2 is arguably a plant food. You know, I think we ought to get rid of pollution. Let's go to net zero pollution. And like Chris Wright, a CEO at Liberty Energy is phenomenal. I like the way he says it and say, let's get rid of energy poverty. Let's go to net energy poverty zero. That to me is absolutely the way to do it. And the only way we're going to get there is nuclear, natural gas, and storage. I mean, it's right up there because we're not going to get there with solar and wind. It's not going to happen. Well, the other part is, and you, and you know this because you deal you deal in this space a lot. The incentive structures are all kind of wacky, right? Depending on how we do a tax code, I've worked on Capitol Hill. There, there's lots of good people up there, right? But incentives and how things play out in the long run. The reality is, if you're really anti CO two, then the only way to really do that is with some kind of carbon taxing. So the incentives are right. I'm not right. I'm not advocating all those things, but it's the only way where you're actually going to make a true impact on CO two is if the incentive structure is out there. Right. To make the right decisions, because if you give tax credits for something, but you don't you, you can't count all the CO2 and else, then you end up with a very arbitrary system oh, that doesn't yes. really get you, you know, it doesn't get you where you want to be. Do you see that if there's with your working with Capitol Hill, do you see storage tax incentives for the homeowners? Do you think That's that a would good help? question? I, I haven't really thought about that very much. I think uh, that to me that, seems to be a, a incentive worth talking about because if we have the Inflation Reduction Act, which has added so much inflation to, uh, you know, you take a look at the, uh, the way the printing of money has gone on, it would make sense as a battery company to see about getting some of that money and look at tax deductions because the solar industry in California is going through some serious heartburn right now because of all that. You can get the solar panels, but they need storage for the houses. Absolutely. And you see, and you do see this, the battery storage companies, 
are, that's why I said we could sell every battery cell if we were making them today. They're all need in order to qualify for some of those credits and other things, they right. need U.S. content. And it's really hard to get the right percentage if you don't have U.S. made battery cells. So exactly. we're in the right market. It's, a, it's going to grow exponentially. Wow. Right? It's yeah. not just us. I mean, the reality is we need as much as we can make in the near term. Uh, so you're going to be able to open next month. Yay. I wish. I, I know your, your stockholders would love to have that, your shareholders. How do people find you? Uh, you can find ABF, American Battery Factory, on the, on the internet. You can find us. But, I mean, obviously, we're not producing sales yet, so people can read about us and do things. But we're not going to be cranking out bulk sales for about 18 months. Uh, but wow. we have an affiliation with Lion Energy, and there's some other people that are, you know, you can find articles about us. A big one is in the supply chain. One of the ones we haven't really talked about is trying to get U.S. content for our materials, right? We need about 16 or 18 main materials, from foils to certain wow. chemistries to the tin cans that go around the, the, the things. So how do you find U.S. made materials for that? A great example right. would be lithium iron phosphate. Well, you need a very high quality. Yep. Up to now, almost none of that's been made in the U.S. So how do you find a U.S. maker? We're working on, we're working with two or three different groups in U.S. or North America. I'll give you for us an example. We need about 7,000 tons of lithium iron phosphate just for our very first line. Well, that's not a tiny amount. No. And when you talk to people that are in that business, they're going, well, yeah. we're going to start having them. I don't have like, it by 27 pocket. or 28. We're going to have five or 6,000 tons, right? Will they be on time? Will they not be on time? So it's a very complicated effort to make sure we get quality and materials that. and bulk materials over time. Boy, the see now as an American, I'm tired of our money going to, and I'm going to be honest, illegals. I'm tired of our money going to Ukraine and Israel and everywhere else. I would rather give money to you guys and say, let's build our grid. I'm all in. So where do, where do we, how do we help get that story out there? Right. Well, I think the, the one positive thing is regardless of the election, I think there's a clear recognition on both of the main political parties that our grid and, and things need major effort, right? It's, it's affecting enough people that they both have to pay attention. Yeah, the 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 infrastructure bill, though, unfortunately, did not do anything for the infrastructure. Right. No, I I recognize that the incentives and what they focused on weren't in the they didn't target some of the right areas. Exactly. Right? They, but I you 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 look at the current campaigns going on. There's enough people who have energy bill problems. Right. There's enough cities that are struggling, municipalities that are saying, hey, it doesn't matter whether you're a Republican governor or a Democrat governor, you're saying, I have a problem with the grid certain times of the year. So I think the recognition that the, the, a different approach is needed, a, a very bipartisan it, approach is needed. It, this is not a Republican or Democrat problem. This is an American problem, and we need American solutions for this. Absolutely. Because I have a saying, and the saying is pretty much... The grid is not racist from the standpoint of it takes physics and fiscal responsibility or blackouts will occur. It's pretty simple. Absolutely. I mean, electricity is, it does not care about your opinion. So, but I'll tell you what's coming around the corner and how soon do you, can you get anything, any news announcements or when's your next big target date? Well, we're going to, we'll be at the Detroit Battery Show that's coming up in, in early October, uh, and we'll be meeting with a bunch of folks there and do some announcements related for us. The big thing is to start the earth moving. The earth moving at our, at the, at the land we have in Pima County is, we'll start uh, just after, in, after Christmas, I'll call it January. Nice. And so, and then about 18 months of construction, and there, it takes a lot of machining. They, they just give an example. This, our initial line building is about 1,500 feet long and 200 feet wide. So this is not a tiny effort. Wow. No, this is huge. And uh, sir, thank you so much for your time. I just appreciate you. I appreciate your service and what you guys are doing at ABF. We need energy security as Americans. And so again, like I said, this is not a Democrat issue. This is not a Republican issue. It is an American issue that we need American batteries like now. <laughs> no, I agree with you, Stu. I mean, that's basically when I swore my oath of allegiance to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, right? That's that's for everybody. And so the, the grid is the same way. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for stopping by the podcast. We'll have all your uh, LinkedIn information and how to get in touch with you. So thank you very much. Thanks, Stu. Thanks.